as you can see from the little ride that we took down the road there the things are really dry here you've seen the dust rolling off the planter as we were traveling from that one field down the road there to come up here to get reloaded this is kind of a central location to put this truck i started this field yesterday afternoon got a good portion of it chunked out my father finished it we left the straight passes for him and then uh he's over I, I went into a field over on the other road there i did the same thing over there i left him a nice straight chunk to finish over there the field that we're planting down the road it looks like i might be able to actually finish that field myself the last few days here i haven't i just start a field and then I leave enough for my father to finish it and then I move on to the next one. This planter here with the shutoffs, it's better and easier to do the headlands and so on uh, with that. Everything has been working really well. However, it's costing quite a bit of money to uh, fill this stuff up with fuel this year. I'm going through right around 100 gallons of fuel on this plant and tractor per day. And uh, this load of fuel that we bought, we just had delivered on Thursday. And it was $5.17 a gallon. I don't know what anybody else is paying, but that trailer load costs right around $36,000. To fill our tank up and that'll last us how oh, judging by how fast we're going through it we might be going through that in about a week to 10 days here because everything is running so i've got the front tank just about full on the planter the back tank i only need to run that about halfway because of the rate that we're putting that on at there's no sense in running that one uh, full I don't need to fill up with seed here for a while and we've been running right around a 20 minute fill up time when I have to fill up with fertilizer and seed the seed tender has been working out really well the only problem that we're having with it is being that it is only one compartment um, I only have one variety in it right now as you can see the window right there is uh that's that's all that's on there because i only had one tote of this particular variety we do have some uh bag corn up on the truck that we can get into if in the in the event that we uh run out of seed that is a um conventional variety in other words it is not we're planting BMR, so it's not a BMR variety. And I do have some acreage over on this farm that we are going to put into, uh, actually it's not a silage. Well, that's a multi-purpose. That'll go silage or grain. And um, we do have some acreage over here that uh, we are gonna put into uh, grain. And if I run out of corn, I'll have to get moved in on that uh that ground so fuel should be just about loaded here and uh we'll get back to planting but everything is just moving right along here the last i recall seeing it this dry was the last year that i planted corn with an open station tractor that was quite a while ago and when I would get done, my shoulders at night, my shirt would look like the back two fenders on this tractor. I could shake my shirt out at the end of the night, and uh, that's about how much dirt would come off my uh, shoulders, off my shirt. So, uh, we'll keep plugging away here. It's hot, it's in the 80s, but um, we're due to get some rain here maybe tonight into uh tomorrow auburn ag has um been spraying right along they're going to be caught up to us in a little while here so that'll be good we'll have the pre-emergent herbicide applied up to 
within a couple hundred acres or so of us here and that'll be good to have that much done take advantage of any little bit of rain that we're going to get and uh we'll just keep on keeping on here so we'll uh join up with you in a little while here all right folks we're just going to kind of break into this video a little bit here with a little bit of shilling um i just got an email a minute ago reminding me that olight is having a sale this month that's going to run from the 19th 8 p.m on the 19th to uh midnight on the 20th i just pass along these sale times to you guys and they usually send me sample pieces of what's going to be in the sale and this month what they have featured is the i5t this light here runs on two double a batteries um, i've used it here for a little while i've been carrying it around in my uh, front shirt pocket and i think it would be handy for anybody that um, wears a work shirt slides in the front pocket perfectly and it is long enough to where it sits in the pocket very nicely now earlier on uh the first i5t that they came out with was this little guy here this only holds one double a and being that it's a little shorter it does work decently on your hat but the clip is reversed so it doesn't work as good as the other light that i prefer which is a baton 2. This one here is uh, the older version. They do have a Baton 3 that is out now. This one charges from a USB cord with a magnetic charger that sticks right to the bottom of the light. And most of their lights uh, charge that way. This one works good for clipping it to your hat brim. I carry this in my front pocket. Anytime I'm working on anything, I've got a light to throw on my hat. Uh, moving corn around in the corn planter at night, uh, going from hopper to hopper, it's the uh, light of choice. I carry it with me every day. Um, another light that I like as well that I carry with me uh, every day is a uh, Seeker 3. The Seeker 3 replaced the uh, Seeker 2. This comes with a, a Velcro case for your belt. However, I ended up buying this plastic one and uh, this is held up really well. Put the light into it backwards, protects the switch and it won't accidentally uh, turn on on you. Again, this one is uh, charges off of the base as well. I know, uh, I know all light would like me to do a whole video every month on the exact features and everything but i'm not going to do that i'm just bringing this information along to you i get enough questions here and there hey what what light do you use and that's why i'm putting a little longer version of uh explaining to you guys that they do have a uh, sale coming up all that beeping is the monitor because i've got the corn planter up and out of the ground and we're doing uh triangular point bros so that is uh gonna do it for the shilling event here again click on the link in the description i get 10 percent of the sales from which when you click on the link and if there's anything in their sale that doesn't appeal to you if you buy the non-sale items and you use uh discount code andy F, 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 you'll get an additional 10% off, but that's only on the uh, non-sale items. So we'll get back into the video here. Just thought I would pass that along to you. I've been working with Olight for two years. Um, I'm not, again, I get 10% from the sales. They don't pay me to say this stuff, and if these lights weren't that great, I wouldn't have any interest in passing this uh, information along to you. So I believe they're really good. There's another company that I'm going to be working with here on something that we're gonna actually be using. I just received the device here the other day. 
we have to get it installed on the tractor we're going to test it out and before i give my two cents worth on what my thoughts are on it i want to use it first so that'll be in a future video here so thanks for letting me ramble on here we'll get back into the video so we'll uh we'll uh, get at you with the rest of the video here Well, we're finishing up with the last couple of fields over here on the Cleverly Farm. We're over on the west side of 31 here. And we had a lot of storm damage roll through here and uh, knocked all these trees down. My father had to come in and clean this ditch up so that the water could kind of flow off out from underneath Route 31 and keep flowing so that it wouldn't flood the road you know we wanted to make sure that um you know we didn't have any problems with the road there so we've got jared and andrew finishing up disking or really not disking they're turbo telling or they're uh hitting this with a one pass tool we've got jared right here with a 9410 and this is a potting or one what is that a terra disc one zero 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 one t we bought that unit last year then we got big man here uh andrew with a six zero zero one on the 7290 now those are metric numbers and that is a 20 foot unit there and then Jared's, I think that's like 30, 33 foot. For the past two years now, that's all we have used for prepping this ground in front of the corn planter. We chisel plow, and then we just run over this with the one pass tool. Prior to, um, doing it this way we ran over the ground twice with a uh, landall disc we would disc after we chisel plowed we would spread fertilizer and then we would come in and disc the ground again and then prior to that we used to disc spread fertilizer and then go over it with a roller harrow but the problem with rolling going over this ground with a roller harrow um cultimulture what have you um there's several terms for uh that tool um it's what it has is roller packers on it and and teeth and um depending on where you're located uh there um there's different terminology for that we have two brilliant um I've called them roller harrows, some guys call them cultimulchers. But the trouble with those tools is they pack the ground down too much and if you get a real heavy rain, it will um, seal the ground right off and your corn won't come up out of the ground. We've had that happen before. So we have discontinued uh, doing the seed preparation that way there's a couple of guys in my area that are still doing it that way and they have a real good luck so andrew and jared are getting ready to pull out of this field and we have one more field here to do just down the road and uh then that's gonna be it for uh what we have over here in warner's on the cleverly farm just getting ready to pull up on the highway there they're folding up i'll see if i can zoom in from here well i'm filming with a gopro camera the uh 20 foot pottinger that folds up that folds up like this and then the uh one that uh jared's using it it comes up like this and then it folds around so I'll see if I can 
zoom in enough because I am down the other end of the field and I don't need to run all the way down there. I'm actually sitting still here right now with a planter and I shouldn't be doing that. But at any rate, uh, we did have a few goofy problems this morning. Uh, I didn't actually get planting corn until noon today. I had to uh, clean all the seed out of the planter because we went from a uh, BMR silage corn variety to a seed consultant's multi-purpose variety. We could either choose to uh, combine this off as grain or chop it as a conventional silage, but at any rate, I had to clean the planter out and move over to a different variety or a different uh, seed corn altogether. And then the frickin' 7290 didn't want to start. So we had to work on that a little bit. What we have wrong with that is a, a bad positive cable. And uh, what we have is a set of jumper cables in the tractor now. And we just have to hook the positive lead from the battery up to the starter for when we want to start it. So, uh, tomorrow will be Monday, and Mike, uh, I gave Mike today off, and uh, that's how he'll have to start it tomorrow, and then I'll get a, a cable ordered. So they're pulling out on the road. They only got to go down the road like four or 500 yards to uh, hit that next field, and we better get back to what we were doing. So, uh, we've got a lot of storm damage here like we were talking about from what happened here in the fall. And um, we felt that we needed to do a little maintenance on oh, this area here so that the water wouldn't back up and flood the uh, highway. So, uh, we want to make sure that the uh, passing by motorists are safe here. And we had to do some of the state's work here so that that main roadway didn't get flooded out. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get back to planting here. I wouldn't be surprised that uh, at some point in time, We'll have to be careful, but I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up getting struck with lightning. And uh, that big old willow tree right there, I bet you someday that's going to get struck with lightning too. Well, we're doing a little no-till planting today. We actually started this field here last night. I did a live stream when I started planting this field, and I ran till maybe, I don't know, quarter after seven or so. Last night, father picked me up just as soon as he was pulling in the field. I had a, uh, the monitor went off and I had number three seed hopper out of seed. So I figured that timing was about perfect. They're a little late getting going this morning. I, uh, they had to move stuff around. We had to go home, get seed and the tender and fertilizer, move fertilizer trucks around and, and everything like that. And I started moving seed around in the planter because I'm going to go from one variety to another. So I can't just fill the planter. I need to run out what is in it. And I noticed my left uh, inner wheel on the wing, all the studs were missing out of it and it had been ridden like that for a little bit of a while so what i ended up doing is i took a stud each out of the the tires on the wing and then i took two out of the tire on the the left wing so i've got four in one wing four in one tire and five in the other so we've got to get some new studs here uh tomorrow to get that going again now we don't do a lot of no-till, we don't do hardly much at all, but this one particular field here, it's on quite a bit of a side hill. Uh, we don't put any manure on it just because it's such a bear to get up and on and over and whatever like that. 
So we choose to uh, no-till it. We did the same thing to it last year. Combine the corn off of it. And now we're doing it again this year. Last year when we no-tilled it, we no-tilled into uh, sod. So we do have a little bit of regrowth here. But once Auburn Ag goes in, they'll burn this off. And it'll look nice and clean. So we're just motoring along here. I've got the um, row cleaners adjusted down. Uh, they're they're a little more aggressive than what we've done thus far with those, and they seem to be doing a real nice job sweeping this uh, oh this the corn, the trash, the fodder, the whatever you want to call it, out of the way, so that we don't have any hairpinning going on. So we're just going to keep on motoring along. We did get a little bit of a shower here. Well, it was a thunderstorm that moved through uh, last night towards home, but uh, we didn't get anything where we are at right here, so we were able to uh, keep moving. So we'll join back up in a while, and uh, hopefully we don't have any more problems or any problems to speak of with that wheel. Being that there's only four studs in it. There is one stud broke off in it that I'm going to have to dig out. Probably going to have to dig it out with a welder. But um, we could get a thunder shower here this afternoon. And that will allow us to do a little more thorough of a repair job. So uh, Sarah was complaining that her air conditioner wasn't working that great on the... Uh, 9560 and she says that, that it's been that the uh, coolant temperature has been slowly rising on it as well so they blew the uh, radiator out on it and they blew the blew her filters out and she said it does a little bit better but not as doesn't do as good as it should so I figured I'd have Kaz come and look at it. I didn't know if maybe the air conditioner was running a little low on Freon or uh, refrigerant. So they came and looked at it. I never went to look at the tractor. It was too far away from home. And it was in the opposite direction that I was going in. And Rich, one of the mechanics got there and he realized that the... Um, well, one of the problems, I don't know if they had to charge the... AC system or not, but he was looking it over and he said that the uh, engine fan drive belt was slightly wore. So they're replacing that right now and hopefully she can get back going again. And I'm hoping that we don't have any problems with the uh, fan drive on that. We did replace that or had that replaced here uh last year 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 before we had to put a we had to put both fan drive clutches on it the driven and the the uh drive clutch so we're just gonna keep on keeping on here and we will join up with you a little later hopefully uh not too much later i'd like to see some rain here this afternoon but um not until after I get this one no-till field done. It is, uh, it, the conditions are perfect. The ground is dry, but it's not hard. And the uh, planter's doing a real nice job getting the seed in the ground. And the um, trench is closing up very nicely uh, right in behind the, uh, the seed there. done doing the no-till here it was 30 20 yeah 28 acres uh, here I am just about out of seed so we are gonna go ahead and load up now and we'll time this we'll kind of show you what things look like loading the loading the planner not that you guys haven't seen that but we'll kind of show you how this little guy works and we'll also show you what this wheel looks like that has the studs missing out of it. 
not that there's any at all too much to see and hopefully all I see is just a couple of vacant holes I have not checked to see if it has loosened up in a little while anyway here so I hope we don't have any surprises when I get back there so we can fill eight rows of this planter at a time and uh, what we usually do is just pull ahead or back up with the uh, pickup truck there and it makes loading up a breeze so we're just starting here at 12:45 filling and we'll see how long this takes it usually takes about 10 or 12 minutes we've got a full fill up to do here so um, this will give you an idea and we've got to fold out the auger so this is the wheel here that had the studs missing out of it and you can see i've got four in there and ah uh, it could have been a lot worse had a little bit of rubbage on this tire here and it's a good thing we didn't break off our valve stem so we'll get all these hoppers open get our auger swung out and we'll load up some seed here All right, we've got all these full. I've got 12.58 on my watch, so I've been 13 minutes putting in roughly 48 bushel of seed. So we've got all, got all the hoppers full, and it's starting to sprinkle. So if we were handling bags right now, we would have to handle them in a hurry because once you get them all out, you gotta get them all in. So we'll get things closed up, and we'll move on to the next field here. This auger, just for a uh, note here once you close that hopper it holds three bushel of seed so you got to make sure you get it shut down so you can get it cleaned out well we're loaded up with corn <laughs> got loaded and just in time it was sprinkling a little bit while we were putting the last of the corn in the hoppers and now she's downpouring so we're headed home gonna put this muddy mess inside the reason why i say muddy is because everything is covered in dust and now all that dust is going to turn to mud so we'll uh have to find a couple of things to do around the shop this rain is really a blessing in disguise really it's something that we really needed and i'm just glad to have gotten done with that no-till field because the conditions were perfect so we'll uh get back to the shop get this thing inside and uh find something to do well we're back to the shop here and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this wheel off and dig the broken stud out of the hub i've got new studs here we'll put well we've got to put two more in this one two in that one and then uh the other wheels on the other side are missing some as well then we'll have to go around with a torque wrench and check all of these and make sure they are tight we haven't had that wheel off in quite a few years we ended up putting tubes in these tires here um well the planter was brand new and then we changed the mainframe tires over to radial tires here two years ago so the back tires have been off recently however these wing tires have not all right we have this wheel assembly removed and it did not have a broken stud uh what there was is a piece of the rim the rim has got a uh, little piece of sharp steel was crossways of the hole and that's what was uh, limiting 
the stud from going in. All the holes are good on the hub. We're just gonna take a uh, grinder and clean this edge up a little bit. And then we're gonna have to keep an eye on this wheel and make sure it stays tight. I do have a spare wheel, but it's an eight hole lug rim for uh, the main frame. So we'll go ahead, get that cleaned up, get it on there, and the girls are gonna be back here. They need oil changes on their chisel plow tractors, so I need to get this thing out of here. This is in decent shape now. We've got that edge cleaned up and we'll just put it back together. We'll have to keep an eye on this wheel here. Make sure we don't have any other problems with it, but it should be uh, okay. Well, we've got this wheel back on there, but I've got to put some wind in the tire. I need to get pulled out of here. They're doing an oil change on the 8360 right now, and I need to get out of the way so they can pull this 9560 in here and get the uh, oil change on it. So we're gonna pull this out. I've gotta put my Schrader valve back in this tire. I went through and tightened up the four tires on the wings, made sure those bolts were all tight. And we're gonna go ahead and retort these mainframe wheels. And then we're gonna run it up to the pressure washer and rinse all the dust, slash now it's mud, off of the cab. And then it looks like we're gonna be able to start planting again here in a couple of hours. So we'll get her done. Well, they've got the oil changed on the 8360 and they are Getting the oil done on the 95 now. And Sarah's running around it with a grease gun. A year ago, we ended up rebuilding these steering cylinders. And we want to make sure that they take grease nicely. The uh, seals and packings were so dry on them steer cylinders that every time you turned, you would hear it growl. It's a lot quieter this year, isn't it? So we had to have a fan belt replaced on this yesterday. Sarah said this was getting hot. I think I talked about that earlier. Rich came, charged the AC system, and then he's got a gauge that he sets on the belt. And he said, you know, if this engine was getting warm enough, it would cause your air conditioner not to work that great. And that belt was slightly out of spec. So he ended up putting a new belt on there yesterday. And uh, the only thing is now it's quite a bit cooler out. And the temperatures were in the 80, well, mid 80s here the other day and now it's in the mid 60s. So it shouldn't run as hot now. Anyway, so the breeze is blowing pretty good and uh, they're gonna get back to plowing here just as soon as the oils get loaded and the filters get changed. Looks like they've got everything's in pretty good order on the plows as far as tips and whatever go. They were working on them here yesterday and then it, they only plowed for a little while, then it got raining. So, yeah. Now there's, you got a Zerk back in here somewhere. Where? Yeah, I was looking, I can't find it. I don't know where the heck this one is. We'll find it though. Um, you do have them right here. Yeah. I don't know where that this one is on this uh, gungeon. Maybe it's at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom front on this side. 
Okay, yeah, I see it. And then you've got this one down here. You've already got that pin there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought for some reason there was one on that part there, too. We'll have to look a little better. Well, we're just leaving the farm here now, headed to the field. And things have greened up quite a bit more since that rain that we got here yesterday afternoon so today is may 17th and it's my youngest daughter's birthday today the year that she was born we were done planting corn on the 16th of may that year she's 16 and back then we ran two six row planters both me and my father planted and we were only growing like Oh, maybe 700, 800 acres of corn back then. And now we're growing a few more acres than that. So we'll be to the field in a little while. Be kind of nice getting back planting after a nice little rain shower. We won't have to worry about any dust today. So we'll touch base with you once we get to the field. And we'll uh, see what the conditions are like. Well, we are rolling right along here. Things look a lot different today than what they have been looking like since we started here. We don't have any dust rolling, which is kind of nice. You can see everything. You can kind of watch things a little better and you don't have this big dust cloud that's in behind you and hovering around you. So that's gonna do it for this video we'll catch you at the next one and we're just going to keep on keeping on here we are just about half done at this point here and providing the weather kind of sticks with us we should be done in about a week or 10 days but it looks like we're going to have some intermittent weather here here and there I don't think we're going to have as long of a stretch as we had when we uh, started here. We had seven good days straight of planting from when we started until yesterday afternoon. So we were shut down for, well, we, we got shut down early yesterday afternoon. We didn't get going again until late this afternoon. So we'll just keep her going. Everything's working beautifully here on the old planter. I'd gotten a couple of comments, you know, why'd you do all that work? And, you know, this guy's going to laugh at you for being broke down and everything else. We haven't been broke down. So it is run every day here. So um, it is what it is, I guess. If this is a little too much for you to fathom, then it's too much for you. Plant by hand. So, take it easy, folks. We'll catch you at the next one.